in creating the horsehair front for our jackets, uh, we're going to refer to uh, the tailoring guide in the Reader's Digest Guide to Sewing because we have to create um, the shape for our uh, horsehair front. Okay, well let's start at the armpit. Uh, in the, and I'm going to use a regular pencil uh, to draw out uh, my shape initially so that I can erase it if I make a mistake. So essentially the horsehair goes around the armhole at around two inches below and then it curves up and it should go above the bottom of the bust dart. So recall that was the nipple. The horsehair doesn't have to go all the way down to the nipple. It can, it can be, uh, go above, <coughs> I don't know, like three inches maybe. Because you don't need the reinforcement that far down. You basically just need it um, uh, on, on the, uh, the upper chest part around here, the shoulders and the armpits curves back down again and it's basically going to go right where your facing line is. So that was from the drafting. You kind of just have to, uh, uh, where the dart hits, you just have to make sure that um, the line lines up there. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to take a, a new uh, marker color, this time gray, and I'm going to draw my, my new um, horsehair facing line. And I'm going to include uh, it going down uh, the same line as the facing line, which we're not actually using in constructing this jacket because we don't need a facing uh, for the construction of this jacket. So far, so good. Uh, moving on to the next step. In creating this horsehair piece, I'm going to use a second piece of paper for this because uh, it just keeps things simpler. I'm going to lay this down underneath my pattern. I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a cloth so when I trace through um, the two sheets of paper, I have uh, something for the the spiky tracing wheel to chew on. Uh, as you recall, we've done this earlier when tracing patterns. I'm going to lay this on here. So I'm laying this on my paper. And your piece of paper should be big enough, should essentially be the same size as your uh, front pattern piece. But, huh, mine just barely is, isn't it? Well, as you know, what we like to do is keep on patching things. Okay, so let's just start where we're starting. Both you and I, uh, I'm just going to take this down so it doesn't slip. Both you and I have kept our original uh, neckline uh, in case we want to reuse the jacket uh, and have a lapel. So with your spiky wheel, uh, trace the new line for your v-neck that you've created. The front part you can draw, and remember to draw that notch. Newly marked uh, horsehair facing line. This part, you can use your spiky tracing wheel. Then you are going to, let's see, you can draw your new shoulder seam, and then you're going to draw this dart down to where your, your newly drawn line is. I'm going to remove my tape. So here comes the tricky part. This is, this is your dart and now you're going to have to pivot your pattern piece so that 
your dart lines up with your new, you're, you're essentially just removing the dart. So you can tape this back down again. And in my case, I'm going to have to add a whole bunch of paper. So that's why I taped it down, so that I can manipulate the whole clump without uh, losing the placement. So here's one piece of correction, and I need one over here too. So I'm going to uh, draw this line, and just to be safe, any dart, any uh, notches, I'm going to include those just in case so that I can line them up with my fashion fabric. And then I'm going to trace this part. Good. So take the tape off, and where I've taped it, I'm going to continue my line. This is the piece, and I just have to um, draw the spiky tracing wheel line so that I can see it. And down here, I can use a ruler. This is my horsehair facing for the front. Let me just cut it out right quick. So here's my piece. So that's the front piece. It incorporates the dart, and because we're only doing part of the bodice, uh, not including the bust, um, we were able to just use one piece for this. Making the back interfacing horsehair piece is similar to the front. The first thing that we want to establish is uh, under the armpit. It should be the same length as it was on the front. Unless your cat chewed the corner. He loves chewing on the corners, messing up the pattern. So this part right here uh, lines up to the presumed front. And then if we follow um, the book, we'll, we'll trace this line halfway. And so it kind of goes around the arms to the upper back, like this. And again, we're going to want to uh, trace that. This, is, this piece is going to be on the fold, on the double. So uh, we'll, we'll get a piece of brown paper again. It should be twice as wide as our back piece. <coughs> Your cut paper has to be wide enough to accommodate the left and the right side flipped over. But we're only tracing one side. Let's hope I have enough. Oh, I just barely have enough. Excellent. Okay, so again, this is a hybrid. Part of it is drawn, the neck, the center back. Kind of make a notch where that line is. This dart, unfortunately, we're going to have to keep and we're going to have to stitch down. <coughs> New shoulder, the corrected armhole. 
and the side. And then this line will trace, I mean we'll use the spiky tracing wheel. And we'll put this on the fold. So what I like to do is just pin it. <clears throat> oh no, I missed that part. Grr. It really is a Frankenstein piece here, isn't it? <clears throat> okay, so I have my piece here on the fold. I pinned it so that it won't torque in any direction. And I can cut this... Ah! I did not draw this line. Sure <clears throat> that when you when you are at the center back line, that that line is perpendicular from your center back line, so that it goes straight across when you unfold it. Okay, so here we have our back horsehair piece, and it's a full piece. 